Thank you, Mr. Watanabe, uh, Vice President of Reality. I'm very pleased uh, to have this opportunity to make a presentation on this topic. My presentation uh, is composed of two uh, sections. The first section is on uh, economic security policy as growth strategy. I will explain that Japan's holistic approach to protect the critical technology, METIS policy, and review of export control policy. The second section is on recent developments in trade rules. I will explain the overview of METIS policy, uh, use of anti-dumping and countervailing duties, and challenges and opportunities. Okay. So let me start with the first uh, uh, set, uh, set of things, uh, background and the key points of today's topic. The first uh, economic security policy as a growth strategy. The basis of national security is rapidly expanding into the economic and uh, technological fields due to uh, technological innovation and uh, geopolitical changes. Also, vulnerabilities in supply chains are becoming clear due to the COVID-19 and the other disruptive challenges. In this respect, the Japanese government recently stated in government-wide documents, such as growth strategy, that Japan will strengthen and promote economic security policy. Japan intends to secure autonomy and gain superiority, as well as deepen cooperation with like-minded countries and uh, an international order based on uh, fundamental values and rules. Japan will strengthen its effort to know, protect, and promote uh, critical technologies via a holistic whole-of-government approach. As introduced, I'm uh, responsible for trade controls, investment screening, and uh, import and export regulations at METI, and oversee the economic security policy for both uh, protection side and promotion side. I would like to discuss this in the first section. And the second section on uh, recent developments in uh, trade rules. While the economic security policy is newly highlighted, free and fair trade remains an essential part of government policy. Actually, the most recent government-wide documents emphasize that the Japanese government will expand free and fair economic order and further strengthen the rules-based multilateral trading system to build a resilient supply chain and to actively develop the global economy in light of challenges such as climate change and digital economy. In addition to rulemaking in such challenging areas, enforcement is also important in tackling unfair trade practices, including those which may lead to overcapacity in certain sectors in the global economy. This aspect is actually closely related to supply chain resilience and economic security policy. In the second section, in this sense, I would touch upon recent developments in uh, trade rules as I'm also responsible for enforcement of such rules as anti-dumping and anti-subsidy uh, countervailing measures to tackle unfair trade practices. Now, let me uh, go on uh, to the uh, first section, economic security policy as a growth strategy. First is about the holistic approach to protect uh, critical technology. This slide shows Japan's holistic approach to protect the critical technology, namely know, protect, promote. Know uh, is uh, to identify uh, choke points in global supply chain with multiple suppliers. Protect is to prevent uh, diversified technology acquisition activities. Promote uh, is uh, R&D promotion in the field of critical technology. Actually, this these three pairs were uh, highlighted in the last year's uh, so-called Inno Integrated Innovation Strategy 2020 that was published last July. Um, this uh, uh, strategy uh, includes the uh, Chapter 6, Safety and Security. But uh, this was the uh, outline of the policies. Therefore, the last one year, uh, since last summer and this summer, uh, the government uh, made an uh, intensive effort uh, to materialize and make it more detailed in the government uh, policy. Okay. So next slide is the center of the today's uh, presentation. Uh, that is uh, government-wide strategies on economic security. The economic security is characterized as key uh, 
policy in three government-wide strategies, namely a growth strategy, a basic policy for economy and fiscal management and reform 2021, and integrated innovation strategy 2021 version. Uh, these three documents are quite important because they decide the allocation of resources or human resources in, in, the, in the Japanese uh, government. And uh, these are decided by cabinet on uh, June uh, 18th, uh, 2021. There, Japan will accelerate its economic security policy, including export controls. So let me highlight uh, the one chapter uh, Chapter 6 of the growth strategy, assurance of economic security and intensive investment. So let me highlight uh, the, uh, this uh, part, assurance of technological supremacy. The first arrow is uh, developing uh, critical technologies such as aerospace, uh, quantum, artificial intelligence, high performance computer, semiconductor, nuclear, advanced material, biotechnology, marine technologies, and so on. Second arrow is protecting critical technologies. Novel export control framework, deemed export controls. These two issues I will touch on later. And the investment control enforcement, immigration screening policy on foreign students and researchers, research integrity, secret patent system, and so on. So this is a comprehensive part of uh, protection policy. So we uh, promote both a protection policy and promotion uh, policy. The third arrow is building resilient supply chain on critical technologies and materials. And uh, these sectors are identified, namely semiconductor, pharmaceutical products, batteries, and critical minerals. Actually, these uh, four sectors are identical to the recent report by the United States, the so-called 100-day uh, supply chain resilience report, uh, which was based upon the President Biden's uh, executive order last uh, February, and then published uh, last June. There, the, these sectors are also identified as the uh, critical uh, areas for supply chain resilience. And the European Union also emphasizes the importance of uh, uh, these, uh, you know, supply chain resilience, uh, namely the uh, autonomous, open autonomous strategy was uh, published uh, first half of this year. The European Union also uh, promoting uh, the uh, supply chain resilience. China also emphasizes the importance of supply chain resilience. It says that uh, you know China should reduce or lower the dependency uh, from other countries on the supply chains, and at the same time, China intends to uh, increase the dependency uh, of other uh, countries in critical sectors on China. So these uh, major economies are promoting this uh, protection policy and promotion policy and emphasizing on supply chain resilience, okay? Let me go on the fourth follow, establishing a funding mechanism for economic security. Probably this is the first time to establish this concept, funding mechanism for economic security. Fifth arrow is promoting advanced semiconductor and battery technologies again. And the sixth arrow, attracting critical industries, manufacturing sites or factories to Japan in order to strengthen our supply chain resilience. Okay, so that's uh, our government-wide strategy right now. So we have a very broad mandate to promote uh, economic security policy. Okay, let me go on to the METIS policy. So given uh, this uh, global uh, strategy, this is the outlook of the METIS policy. Uh, there are several pillars. Uh, the uh, left uh, Top uh, economy and the environment, uh, or green growth strategy in the center, uh, economy and the national security, and right economy and inclusion. Uh, it's a labor policy. And in the middle, digital economy, and the bottom, a uh, global economic strategy, including trade policy. So, my point is that uh, now the, in the red circle, um, 
economic security policy is the center of the METI's uh, policy too, uh, saying that uh, towards uh, the economic security and supply chain resilience, the holistic approach is uh, critical. Uh, technologies, infrastructure, and industries are important, and saying no, protect and promote are the keys. And essential sectors are semiconductor, data center, biotechnologies, and so on. Okay. So now METI also emphasizes the importance of supply chain resilience. Okay. So let me go on to the specific issues on uh, export controls. There are many uh, important issues in economic security policy, but uh, in this uh, seminar, I would touch upon the two important topics from the perspective of export control. The first one is challenges of existing export control regimes and possible solution. Japan's export controls are in accordance with the international regimes, uh, for example, vaccine arrangement and the nuclear suppliers groups and so on. But you see the uh, some limitations of the existing uh, internal regimes in the left side of this uh, slide. The context is a military civil fusion strategy uh, by uh, countries of concern or rapid development of emerging technologies. But the difficulty is to respond uh, our pressing economic security needs uh, because of the deficiency of the you know, consensus process by 42 uh, countries, uh, for example, in the case of Vasana, we need a very much quick uh, consensus to achieve the export control. So that is one aspect. The other aspect is right uh, line problems of unilateral measures. You see the uh, President uh, uh, Trump uh, issued a number of uh, unilateral measures in the administration, namely the foreign direct product rules or uh, additions of entity list and so on the number of uh, impact on the industries. And in response, China also uh, had a number of measures, including the newly entered into force, uh, the ex export control law, or anti-extraterritorial uh, application law, or anti-sanction laws, and so on. So that is a sort of uh, uh, escalation of uh, uh, unilateral measures by two major economies. So these are the detrimental to business predictability for companies like Japan and the European Union, and probably in the case of the United States and China too. And uh, unilateral measures are not effective measures because uh, unilateral measures cannot deter actually the exports of uh, equivalent items from other uh, countries because there are loopholes uh, to procure the necessary items from other uh, countries. Therefore, our solution is to promote uh, the uh, so-called like-minded countries approach to form a novel export control group uh, complementary to existing international regimes. By having a like-minded countries approach uh, which possess uh, critical technologies, we can achieve the more effective export control and also avoiding any escalation of unilateral measures. So now we have a mandate under the cabinet decision last June. So we are uh, communicating with other uh, trading partners regarding this idea. Okay, so that is the first one. And the second one is a review of deemed export controls. Um, having appropriate controls on uh, intangible technology transfer is foundational for both for national security and innovation in companies, universities, and institutions. You can imagine intangible technologies such as uh, design program software or algorithm. Recently, it's, it's becoming uh, much more important. So we have decided to review and expand the scope of control into a resident influenced by uh, foreign uh, countries. Because currently, Japanese nationals and foreigners Staying in Japan for more than six months are exempted from the uh, intangible technology transfer controls in Japan. In the middle, there is a picture which uh, shows a current regulation. Actually, transaction between uh, resident B and non-resident C is subject to export control within our jurisdiction. However, due to the current problem, then uh, our reform proposal is at the bottom of the picture. Uh, currently, uh, resident EA has a transaction with uh, resident C regarding uh, critical technology, 
Then in case resident C dash here is significantly influenced by uh, non-resident C uh, due to the uh, foreign government contract or uh, economic benefit or instruction, then in that case, resident A uh, with resident C needs an export license. This is a new approach to uh, protect uh, critical technologies early in advance in the transaction, given the importance of intangible technology transfer. So this new proposal was backed by the uh, cabinet decision, and now it's uh, under uh, public comment. So therefore, we intend to enter uh, this new uh, legislation, uh, new uh, uh, rules uh, into force uh, April of, of 2020. So that's the uh, current uh, development of uh, export controls and security, econ economic security policy. Okay, so this is the end of the first section. Okay, so let me uh, go to the uh, second section. This is a uh, straightforward. This is straightforward, so I will be very brief. Um, first, the overview of METI's policy. The, you can recall the uh, overall slide of METI's policy. Among uh, many important pillars, a uh, global economic strategy is one of them. Uh, so METI intends to uh, integrate the internal policy and the external policy. And uh, currently, there are two important points. The first point is uh, building trustable value chains, focusing on resilience, green, climate change, and human rights protection, and the digital. And second arrow is upgrading free and open trading system, built for sustainability and fairness, creating norms that ensure a level playing field at WTO, EPAs, and other fora. Of course, including uh, CPTPP, uh, Japan, EU, or RCEP, or Japan, US, Japan, UK, and so on. We are the center of the mega FTA right now. And for example, for market distorting measures such as harmful industry subsidies, uh, both rule making and enforcement are important. Of course, there are a number of uh, uh, trade issues uh, in our hands, but uh, today's focus is the enforcement, uh, in particular, anti-dumping and countervailing duties. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. Okay, so this is a uh, overview of the recent anti-dumping and CBD measures uh, by Japan since uh, 1995. So only uh, nine cases are there. And the, in the case on the anti-dumping, but on the CBD, countervailing duties or anti subsidy cases, only one year 2006 on the LAM product. So our use of CBD is very much limited right now. So let me show the uh, status of the implementation of AD measures first in the world. anti dumping measures are widely used around the world with 113 measures uh, imposed in 2020. In particular, after the COVID, uh, the, the number is growing. And the metal sectors and the chemical sectors are outstanding. And next slide is about status of by implementation of CBD measures in the world. Between 1995 and 2020, uh, there have been uh, 344 CBD measures around the world. Eight countries have implemented over 10 CBD uh, measures, uh, such as the United States, EU, Canada. Australia, Mexico, India, Brazil, and China. So Japanese case is very much limited. Again, the uh, outstanding sectors are metal and the chemicals. Okay, so let me. Now, uh, what is the challenge and of our service? Um, actually, the uh, trade structure have become more complex with the development of global supply chains. So we review the other trade tools in that context. And then a CBD, a countervailing duties, needs to be reviewed as an option to redress a market distorting measures such as industrial subsidies. So METI has conducted a study uh, under the umbrella of the subcommittee on uh, trade uh, remedies in the Industrial Structure Council. And the key finding, findings are as follows. The first issue is difficulty in gaining uh, information on subsidies, or in particular, the benefits of uh, uh, subsidy uh, under the definition of WTO agreement and the domestic uh, regulation. 
And the second challenge is the uh, uh, concern uh, about uh, retaliation from other countries. Once civil is uh, issued, then the, the countermeasure may come. So that is another concern. The third uh, uh, issue is a lack of awareness of the CBD measures because our use was only year 2006, a long time ago. Then uh, there is a lack of awareness of CBD measures in Japan. But given the uh, uh, current uh, economic situation and the important supply chains, why not uh, we think about at least the use of CBD measures? So this is the most recent uh, proposal uh, by the Industrial Sec uh, Structure Council subcommittee uh, chaired by Professor Kawase, uh, perhaps uh, followed by myself today. And the uh, final report was published the 30th of uh, August. So uh, next step is for us to promote uh, international cooperation. We work together with the European Union and United States uh, to compare best practices to use such uh, trade remedies. Thank you.